What is a vertical tasting? Learn more about that and how it can make you look smart in this video. Hello, hello, hello! Welcome back to Exotic Wine Travel. I am your host, Matthew Horky. Today, we are going to talk about vertical tasting. You know, in the wine world, you'll hear fancy terms like horizontal tasting, vertical tasting. What does all that stuff mean in the first place? Well, today we're going to talk about it. Vertical tasting is when you taste the same grape or the same cuvee from the same producer, but different vintages, different years, different harvests, so you can see how the weather, the climate of each year, the winemaking, or the winemaker changed the style of wine. When you have horizontal tasting, you have the same vintage, same grape variety, but maybe a few different producers to see how that grape variety performs across the specific vintage. It's a very useful tool when it comes to uh, wine professionals, how they understand wines. For a general consumer, it's just flat out fun. <laughs> it also can make you look really smart. When you do a lot of vertical tasting, you can say things like, oh wow, it seems like 2003 was a fantastic vintage for Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> then you sound cool and impress your friends. But anyways, we are going to do a vertical tasting today of Etna Biancos from this producer, uh, Feudo Cavalieri. This is the Millimetre because it's growing at 1,000 meters, Etna Bianco. I have 2010 all the way to 2015, made from the grape Caracante. Caracante is a high-acid grape variety. Some people believe it's been grown on Etna for over 1,000 years. Really high ass acidity. Com some people compare to Riesling. Uh, if you get the chance to go to Mount Etna, it's in Sicily. Humongous mountain sticks up about, uh, I think, over 3,000 meters, so 10,000, 11,000 feet above sea level. Towers over the city of Catania. When you're there tasting at the wineries, it's so awesome. You're sitting there tasting wine, and you can see the volcano constantly smoking which is really cool. So let's taste through these wines. This is a grape that uh, this is a grape variety that many professionals believe has a bright future in the south of Italy. Uh, I'm a big fan of it. You know, Etna is a volcano, so you have these smoky mineral notes that you get from grapes grown in volcanic soil. So let's taste through these babies. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so we've tasted through these. I've actually tasted through these several times, uh, even prior to this recording, so I get a, <laughs> I get an idea of what's going on here. You know, the wines, you know, I think in the 2015, the 2013, 2011, or, or in the 90-point type of range. Unfortunately, the 2010 was corked, uh, so it had some kind of off aromas. For those of you who don't know what uh, corked wine tastes like, it doesn't mean that there's little pieces of cork in it. It means that there, it's got this wet cardboard type basement smell is very unpleasant it's unfortunate because the 2010 was unctuous in the mouth layered and everything like that uh the grape caracante i have experience with it i don't have vast vast experience from it from what i've seen in this vertical tasting what are some useful things that you can take away you learn that caracante is a wine that it maybe doesn't unfurl and gain tons of complexity, but it, it is long-lived thanks to its high acidity. Grapes like Riesling, uh, as they age, they, they garner complexity. Bordeaux, as it ages, it, it just gains all this complexity. This kind of stays good. It doesn't really age that much. It just puts on a little bit weight. You know, I prefer the 2015 uh Really, really nice wine. With Caracante, you're going to get these lemony flavors. Oh, a lot of lemon, lemon, citrus peel, white peach, uh, maybe even some unripe pineapple, high mineral notes, high acidity. I really like the 2015, 13, and 11. It seemed like uh, 14, there was something a little bit different in the cellar. Maybe it was a different winemaker. I don't know. I met this producer at, uh, <clears throat> at the Go Volcanic Summit in Hungary. But it was really interested to do this tasting. I actually have a full tasting article coming up about this. Really cool. You know, in the past, when I when I just started getting into the wine industry, I thought, oh wow, uh, you know, scoring wine so easy. You swish it around, you evaluate it, and you just you just say your opinion. What I didn't realize is the further you get into it, I have more and more respect for uh, critics. Professional critics guys have been doing it for a long, long, long time because they're often doing vertical tastings or they've experienced with these wines 
throughout the years, throughout many vintages, and where the way the way that prices of wine are going, especially for premium wines, that's very cost prohibitive to many people here today, especially many just uh, wine writers in general. So vertical tasting, really cool, useful tip. Uh, I learned that I you know I like Caracante a lot, a little bit on the younger side. When it's too young, sometimes it can be too sharp, too acidic. And as it as it goes on throughout the years, I think people that like aged whites, uh, like things to put that put on weight, want things to go with uh, shellfish, crustaceans. These wines kind of remind me uh, almost of like how Cru Muscadet ages from France, just with a little bit more Italian flair. So tell me, do you do vertical tasting? Do you enjoy it? You like it? Do you find it useful? Do you have fun with it? Put it in the comments below. And guys, if you like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Exotic Wine Travel. I will see you in the next episode.